so excited. He's making his morning footy debut, Pablo Maurer of The Athletic. Pablo, first of all, I just want to tell you, you tell the stories in soccer that I love reading and I love hearing. You consistently just are, I, I absolutely love reading your stuff. So I just want to thank you personally for the, the work that you do because I think you're tremendously important and very good at what you do. And we are so happy to have you on Morning Footy right now. Uh, thank you for having weird taste. I appreciate that. <laughs> I know. It, you know, like soccer, it's a it's a quirky it's a quirky sport, and it just you know it lends itself to to weirdness. So so we appreciate you. Um, you recently wrote an article about this this sort of mission to get Messi's jersey after after a game. Um, what what was the the thing about if, when you dove into this? What was the thing that kind of surprised you the most about sort of the the process that happens after after a game and like how things are decided? Yeah, I think to your point about the pieces I write, this is a very much a good fit because it was something that seemed simple on the surface, but the more I started reporting it, I realized it was pretty complicated. I mean, um, first and foremost, I had no idea that. Uh, Adidas and the league give MLS clubs an allotment of jerseys that they can give away for free. So, you know, any given player might have between five and 10 jerseys that they can trade after games, throw into the stands, whatever. And, you know, once they exceed that allotment, they get charged. Uh, obviously, this, this doesn't, um, you know, apply to Messi because he's probably giving away the shirt that he wears in the field and 15 others every single game. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's fascinating to me the sort of machinations and negotiations that are going on in MLS locker rooms. I mean, you have um, in their first game against Cruz Azul in Leagues Cup, you had a player who uh, came out of the Newell's Academy, like Messi, say that if anybody else got his jersey, he would quote tear the locker room apart. <laughs> right. Um, in the next game, I feel like it was uh, you know very much a fait accompli, if you will, that Thiago Almada has uh, you know his a teammate at the World Cup in Argentina would get it. Um, but, you know, when they play Charlotte, when they play, you know, it, like many of these other teams, it's going to become a bit of a free-for-all. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if anybody gets assaulted over this. We'll see, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo, um, since it's your morning footy debut, you got to do some sort of initiation here. And since you wrote such a great uh, story on that iconic Landon Donovan water fountain drinking moment, <laughs> I, I, I need you to do your best Landon Donovan drinking out of the water fountain impression. Oh, you're going to do that to him? <laughs> wow. Uh, it's, it's morning uh, footy initiation. Wow. wow. Yeah, Nico, I hate to write the news to you. I don't have a water fountain available. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> um, I, I guess I could try. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah! I can feel it. If anybody it. screenshots Serving. that and puts that on Twitter, I'm never coming back. Uh, I bet Felipe Cardenas was just waiting for that, that moment, to be honest. He was. He screenshotted for imagine. sure. Yeah. No doubt. Absolutely. Um, does this, Pablo, does this rival anyone else? I mean, I can imagine when Beckham first came in the league, there was probably some intensity, but this feels like a completely different level. You wrote about some of the original, some of the original big names that came to play in this country in Pele and Johan Cruyff. How does this compare? Yeah, I mean, really, the only thing I think you compare it to is Pele. I mean, I spoke to the uh, the equipment manager for the Cosmos in the '70s, who um, still alive and well, and still has a massive collection of uh, Cosmos shirts, including wow. Pele shirts. And you know, he used to prepare five or six kits a game. I mean a first half one, a second half one, one that he would give to his teammate, and then a, a few that he would just give to, I guess, the, the people who didn't manage to get it off him on the field. I mean, when Pelé played his uh, final game in Washington, D.C., um, he was literally, in 77, chased off the field by a mob of fans. I mean, and, you know, you can see in the very poor quality film I have of the game, he just takes his shirt off and just throws it as he sprints off the field because he's pretty much afraid for his life, you know? So um, I think he played another game in DC with Santos, a friendly where uh, he left the field literally wearing nothing but underwear because people took a short too. <laughs> so um, I don't know that we'll get to that point with Messi. I think uh, security has improved. Um, maybe the dignity of opponents has improved. They wouldn't want to strip him basically nude on the field. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's a long and storied history of this for sure. I'll add, just from a player's perspective, when 
you're on the pitch and maybe it's your idol you're playing against, maybe it's someone that you've looked up to. In your mind, you're going to sw swap jerseys with that player. But it, it really depends on a couple of factors. One, is there a relationship with that player with anyone on your team? Because if that's the case, you know that jersey's going to that player. Hmm. If there's not, I've seen players ask at halftime. Hmm. Mm. Uh, Eddie Johnson, uh, not to call out anybody, but we were at Copa America <laughs> in, did. in yeah. 2007. And, you know, they have Raquel May, uh, Tevez, uh, Messi, Cambiasso, Zanetti. Jeez. You, you know, you're, you're looking at an all-star team. Halftime, Eddie Johnson goes over to Tevez, who was not even playing, and goes, hey, let's swap jerseys. And they swapped at halftime. Wow. Bob Bradley was livid. Wow. Was livid. So I think there's, there's things that go into it. You don't want to come out off as like needy because then people look at you and you're like, you don't have any respect. Like you're, you're a fan. You're not a player. You've got to have some dignity with yourself. You can't just go and, and grovel for a, a kit. And after the game, if you're not playing or you didn't play well, it could be awkward too to say, hey, Messi, can I get your jersey? You megged me five times and, and I'm, you know, I'm okay. Versus, you know, maybe there's three other players who have played well and they're like, hey, you back off. I get seniority. So there's a number right. of things that go into it. So it'll be interesting throughout the, the regular season who, who's going up to them. Are they going at halftime? Are they talking before the game in the tunnel? Because then you're like, where's your mind at? That's, that's the biggest issue. I feel like players want the jersey. And that's why the halftime thing probably for Bob Bradley was the one that sounded off the alarm because like Eddie Johnson playing in Copa America in Argentina. Um, have you, Pablo, talked to any players that are like kind of adamant that, that they get their kit? Some MLS players are like, oh, excited for that moment because I feel like it just, it brings down a barrier in the competitiveness and it shows that your priority might be something else other than the game. Well, so Nico, it's interesting what you're saying because I, I thought the same thing. It's like it, there's there's really no other profession or line of work where it would be considered, I guess I just use the word appropriate to sort of um, seek an opponent's you know, or colleague's sort of memento out in that way, right? It's such a thing that's that's unique to soccer. But I mean, like so many other things involving the situation, it's messy, man. I mean, like if you get to Charlie's point, you get megged five times in a game by Messi. You know, it might be the only player in the world where nobody's really going to blame you, you know, and where it's, <laughs> it's maybe not inappropriate to sort of do that. Um, Charlie, I, I'm reminded I just had breakfast with Ray Hudson in Fort Lauderdale a couple weeks ago. He, he told me, you know, he, he basically got a yellow card for just clobbering Messi from behind. <laughs> and as he went to help him up off the pitch, he just went, the shirt, can I get the shirt? <laughs> so, things like that happen. And uh, strangely enough, this is... Uh, 10 second long heartbreaking story ray who was a fantastic dude just lent that jersey in a frame to a buddy who was opening a sports bar oh god and the sports bar folded and he never saw it again <gasps> um, oh I wow know, i know yeah that's tragic Crazy, right? absolutely tragic Jeez. um yeah i don't want to come off as no a fan. and you meant no, pele right can't. what's you, up you said he clobbered messy you meant pele no uh ray hudson ray hudson Ray Hudson, yeah, yeah, who? yeah, yes, of course. Sorry, I'm yeah. getting my timelines entirely crossed up. Now. That's fine. Wait, wait, listen, we all have messy on the brain right now. Yeah. It's totally. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that that leads me to my my next question, Pablo, because um, you you've been tweeting. I, you're a great follow on on Twitter as well, and um, you know you've been saying like just how fun it is and how you still can't really believe that we are watching. Lionel Messi playing in Major League Soccer right now. I have had the same reaction. Like it is, it is a joyful experience watching this man take the pitch, wearing pink, playing in North America. Um, for you, as a soccer fan, as a guy who has been in and around the sport and this league for so long, what's it been like for you, just from a from a purely fan perspective? Yeah, it's interesting because I'm. I, like anybody who knows me personally would probably call me a cynical person. I mean, if, if you follow me on Twitter, I probably rag on MLS sometimes uh, good heartedly and some uh, sometimes from a very dark place. Um, <laughs> but the, you know, the messy situation is is definitely one where it's like uh, it's the first time in a while I've been, you know, I was at his first two games covering it for the athletic, obviously. And um, there's a moment uh, 
you know, standing behind the ad boards when he scored the free kick goal where all I could really do is laugh, man. You know, I mean, it's so it's so rare to see an athlete really truly live up to the hype in that way. And it's particularly crazy with Messi because the hype is, you know, like some heavenly amount just through the roof and still somehow he lives up to it, you know. Um, I'll say a little bit of the sort of shine is wearing off. Like I would like to see... Um, you know, MLS defenders maybe try and defend him. <laughs> I think, like, a lot of guys are, a lot of guys are, uh, I think, scared of getting posterized. But I think that's, it's interesting because again, like I said earlier, you know, say he he megs you or say he, you know, he scores a golazo on you. I mean, it's messy. No one's gonna, no one's gonna, you know, like. Uh, tell the rando MLS defender, you know, oh, I can't believe you got beat by Messi. He's been beating, you know, the world's best defenders for his entire career. So, but no, it's been it's been fantastic, man. What are you going to say? We, we get to watch the greatest player of all time, essentially, although that's, for me, it's Maradona. But um, we get to, to watch, you know, arguably the greatest player of all time, um, you know, play just a few feet away from us. It's crazy. Which uh, brings me to my question. I have to ask, uh, for someone who is so enamored, I would assume you would have been in Miami, but it looks like you're in the New England area. Is there any specific reason for that? Is there anything you can possibly shed a light on? Yeah, I'm up here um, doing a little reporting on the situation surrounding Bruce Arena, obviously the Revolution head coach, um, who's on administrative leave right now, um, you know, alleged to have made, I, I believe the words were insensitive and inappropriate remarks. Um, you know, it's been interesting, obviously, Bruce has, uh, I would say has a reputation for being super blunt, super direct. And I think, you know, in many ways that's probably worked in his favor over his career. Obviously he's to me beyond a shadow of a doubt on the field, he's the greatest coach this country's ever produced, you know? Um, but I, you know, I, what, you know, without knowing specifically what he did or what he said, which is, um, you know, I think what a lot of us are trying to get to the bottom of right now, it's, it's sort of tough to even kind of weigh in on, you know, on my my feelings or your feelings or anybody's about it. You know, so it's a, it's a it's a fascinating situation. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll uh, be definitely keeping a very close eye on your uh, fantastic reporting as always, Pablo. Thank you so much for joining us on on Morning Footy. We we'll, would love to have you back at any point and uh, keep up the tremendous work, man. Thanks, guys. Take care.